All right, guys, I've been surfing around on eBay again. I found a lock called a canard. I have never heard of this thing before. Comes with a security card, though, and it's got some hardware in the box. Uh, you get a whole pile of well, what appear to be multi lock keys. And when you take a close look, indeed, they are multi lock. This is a pin and pin lock. And it is a multi-lock keyway, dimple lock, so you got pin and pin. Um, looks like we got five outer pins and five, or a total of five pins. So we got five outer pins and five inner pins. We probably need to pick to get into this thing. It does work beautifully. But despite having a pile of these things, we don't need no stinking keys. Let's go ahead and pick our way into this and see what we got. Learn a couple of things about picking pin and pins. Let's see what we got here. All right, first thing, find a good tensioner. We covered that before. Let's see what we got here. Find this guy, maybe. He's too small. Let me get a fat one. It's a little loose, a little fatter on that. And there we go. That ought to be plenty good. I think we can control it. I'm going to try to pick it counterclockwise. And when I pick it, let me turn this a little bit and zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about here. I'm going to use the edge of the lock as a guide. And I'm going to be using a Sauber pick. These are from the Sauber kit. And this is a flat flag. These are actually designed to pick multi-locks. And if you take a look, they really did their job well. I'm going to use the edge to guide it. And I hope you can see inside of there, but that flag lines up perfectly with the center of that pin, which well, I'm sure it was engineered to do exactly that. So what we need to do is pick the outer pins first, and when we do that, we're going to get a deep fault set. Once we get that, I mean very deep, and once we get that, then we're going to, that'll tell us that we're bound up on the inner pins. Now th these do contain security pins, so it could be uh, there are serrated and there are also spools used in multi-lock. I don't know about this one. So what I do is I apply moderate tension, and then using the edge, just slide it back until I hit a speed bump. And by speed bump I mean a pin that I can't slide the pick under. And I've learned that in dimple locks that's the binder. That's the binding pin. So you pick him first. Now on these pin and pins you gotta be really careful. Don't put it be directly beneath the pin. Don't pick the inner and outer pins at the same time. Wedge it up against the rounded part of the outer pin and stop there. Just pick the outer pin. Let's see if I can... There we go. That's pin four. I'm sorry, that was pin three. This is on pin four. Get it guided here. Oh, I, don't mean, I thought I had a binder there. Okay, we're done. Where'd you go? Hey, we're on pin two. Got a little click on him. Okay, that was four again. And five, I don't know, I'm getting nothing. Pin one. Okay, got a good click on him. Pin three. Okay, we got a good false set going now. Oh, we got a very good. I thought I had it there for a second. That's what I mean by a deep, deep false set. And now that tells me we have to work on the uh, inner pins. I only picked four pins, but. Maybe, I didn't even look at the key. Maybe number five doesn't need it. Let me look at that. Yeah, number five looks like he's all the way down. So maybe I just didn't have to pick him. But uh, don't pay attention to key. Pay attention to what the pins tell you. So we're looking for an inner pin now that's binding. And there he is, pin four. Now on the inner pins, you got to be really careful. The springs on them are not nearly as strong as the springs on the outer pins. So if you're not paying attention, you can overset them very easily. Sometimes it's really even hard to detect them. There it is, three. I got a click, okay. And there we go. That, let me get that pick out of there. That is how easy it is to pick a canard. I only picked three inner pins. So let's take a look at what we got in here. What's going on? Let me zoom this bad boy out. I do have plenty of keys, so we can go ahead and lock this thing back up. So let's just turn that back up. 
get a pinning tray, get a screw stick, a Phillips screw stick, there we go. I gotta tell you, I, you know, for 20 some odd dollars, I think I paid about $23.95 for this thing. I would have expected a little more entertainment value out of it. All right, just go ahead and now watch this. I've done this before. Uh, on multi locks, they go all the way through. There's nothing to stop them except the uh, the tailpiece. And you can shove them. Well, on all the previous ones anyway, you can shove them too far. Yeah, there we go. So you can shove it all the way through this. So it's absolutely critical you have that tailpiece to get the correct depth. There's no other stop on this key. All right, so we got it. We got to turn. Let's take a look at that tailpiece. I'm going to turn it about like that because I don't want I don't want to orient that groove vertically on the I don't want all the pins to pop into it. And I need a medium follower. And let's see what we got here. See if we can do this without destroying anything. <laughs> No wonder we didn't have to pick pin 5. There is no pin 5, despite the 5 cuts in the key. So let's see. He went in about that far. I'm going to put my finger right there. So that tells me that pin number 1 is a non-player. Pin number 1 doesn't enter into the formula. Alright. Doesn't matter. They are pin and pin. Let's go ahead and pull these out of here. Okay, these are all look like the same thing. Let me get these aligned correctly. Yeah, no security pins yet. And the last one. Yeah, I think we got ripped off. We got cheated on this lock. I got to tell you, four lousy pins for. That's not all. Twenty something bucks is not a lot of money for a pin and pin, though. So I really don't have a lot of room to complain, I suppose. All right, let's see what they got upstairs. Probably all empty. Okay, there we have one pin and pin. Okay, there's your second one. I don't see any weirdness on the pin. These are all standards. I'm going to pull out those upper pins in a minute, but I, I think, based on the way it felt, how easy it was to pick this canard, that they are probably, you got all the springs just fell out over here, but all the springs are standards. Let us take a look at these guys. Okay, he's trapped. Come on. He's not going to come out. But you can see this, how the spring, I hope, if the camera will cooperate, see how that spring loaded? And it just really doesn't take hardly any pressure at all to get that inner pin. And you can see it would be a lot smaller than the pin that goes, or the spring that goes on the outer pin. Pretty tough, the steel spring, like a shock absorber, compared to a pin, a, a spring that might come out of a pen. Very, very light tension on that guy. And inside of here, of course, very large holes, but no magic whatsoever. No threading, no nothing. I got to tell you, I'm disappointed in this Canard lock. It was for the money. I, th I just think that they probably should have thrown in that fifth pin and maybe thrown in a couple of security pins. Anyway, fellas, there you go, the Canard lock. I can't recommend it, but if you want to practice, this seems to be a pretty good training lock. Anyway, thanks for your time. Stay safe. Stay legal, and you know what? I'm glad somebody just reminded me here. Close up of the pins. Alright guys, thanks.